It's described as being the greatest loss of life of any natural disaster in, in recorded history. There's still a whole lot that needs to be done. Do I see progress going forward? Yes. Is it going to be done tomorrow? No. But I'm hoping five, ten years from now we're looking back saying we did it well, we did it right, and we've made progress. I'm Kathy Walmer, um, Executive Director of Family Health Ministries. I'm also um, an adjunct assistant professor at Duke Global Health Institute and I uh, am currently working as the liaison for the Haiti Lab Project, which is a three-year project um, under the direction of the Franklin Humanities Institute. It's hard to believe we're coming up on a year Wednesday. Um, which was just an incredible, you know, event um, that has changed the face of what we did significantly over the last year. Um, Family Health Ministries has primarily been in the area of women and children's health and education. And we've worked in Haiti um, for about 17, 18 years. So we were there well before um, the disaster struck. And all three of our communities, which is Port-au-Prince, Laogon, which is south of Port-au-Prince, and a small mountain community called Fondois, were heavily um, damaged in the, um, the earthquake. And we were very blessed in that um, in Port-au-Prince, our two-story clinic held there, so we were able to quickly um, gather resources and people and get people into the country and started providing um, uh, health, community health outreach clinics um, to that community um, and we ran relief teams for about the first 8 to 12 weeks after the earthquake through April um, through that clinic and um, we did a couple clinics back out in Lagon once we got that clinic up and running. So here we were, we really were looking, we look at ourselves as, as um, an organization that does development work in the area of women and children's health care. We never saw ourselves as a relief agency and within a matter of, you know, a few seconds we were thrown into relief work. My name is David Walmer. I am on the faculty of the Duke Global Health Institute and the chairman of Family Health Ministries. As far as the local communities went, the, our medical staff in both communities continued to provide care and they, they responded to whatever the health care needs were. They were. When it was trauma, it was trauma. When it was, you know, food resources. And we used um, some of the earthquake relief money that we uh, received in response to the earthquake to help them rebuild their homes as well as some other basic infrastructure we'd lost. Later on, when there was needs for sort of preparing for the cholera epidemic later in the year, they, they just sort of responded to those needs. The worst of the cholera epidem epidemic was more in the northern parts of the country. So we, we were catching the, the edges of it, but we're not in the center of that epidemic. So we were fortunate that uh, the tent cities and things we had didn't get hit as hard as some of the communities up in the north. We're now to the point where, you know, the kids are back in school uh, in Fondois. Everybody has at least temporary housing or better. Um, our clinics are all open and running, and we're starting to shift now back from, you know, looking at relief and reconstruction into more programming um, and continuing to develop programs within our communities. That's not to say we don't have, you know, the school to rebuild and the orphanage to rebuild, um, but we've we're, we've made significant progress over the last year, which. I'm really happy to be able to say because there were times in the last 12 months that it just felt like we were making no progress. The project that I've been involved with is the, the PTSD, post-traumatic stress syndrome project that's associated with Haiti. Um, PTSD has become a real issue down there since um, the earthquake and there's very lim limited mental health services so we've gone down and taken undergraduate students down there last fall and we kicked off a new project looking at trying to assess PTSD in the Haitian culture and doing culturally appropriate assessments of PTSD. Their level of PTSD seems more severe than what the actual problem is. And, and such as an example would be, um, when it rains, is this a significant 
problem? Does this cause tremendous stress in your life? And, and the answer is yes. And you and I wouldn't think that rain in our lives would cause that much stress. But if you think about living in a tent city and when it rains it gets muddy and you have you know, limited um, roofing and you get water in your house and you can't sleep and your children can't go to school because there's no roof over the school, you know, those cause significant stress in, in the Haitian population. And they say PTSD can manifest itself for, you know, two, three years after a certain event. So it's not like this happened and now we're a year out and this is going to go away. Hopefully we can develop good assessment tools and then can funnel those individuals with mild to moderate PTSD into the program side of things that we're developing. And then of course the severe um, PTSD people we will refer out. One of the greatest needs we have right now is to find ways of reaching many, many more women through the Cervical Cancer Prevention Program. Our Cervical Cancer Prevention Program over the last four or five years has screened over 10,000 women. And about one woman in 20 walking in the street has advanced untreatable cancer, which means that there's a whole cadre of women that have treatable disease that need to be found and treated before they get in the same situation. We just have to keep hanging in there and putting the next foot in front of the other. Um, always funding's an issue. We have significant pro programs and projects that are out there um, but need funding. Um, we want to build a women and children's hospital and um, we need a couple million dollars for that and you know it just takes time to build those funds to provide those services and the hard part is not being able to move as fast as you'd like and that it really does make a significant difference when these resources and programs aren't there for people. The people that continue to work there are people that aren't discouraged when they have setbacks. We seem to when we step back the next surge forward is always farther than we were the last time. Post earthquake I've seen more people having a hard time dealing with what they've been through than I ever saw in the 17 years leading up to that. But they're, they're bouncing back. It's an inspiring place to work. With the new year upon us, I'm really hopeful. We have to, to keep moving forward with an optimistic heart and um, I think working all together and working collaboratively with Duke University, with other NGOs, um, it's about what we can do collaboratively and change can happen.